Okay, the Friendship Garden of Jerusalem project. It was inspired by the discovery of the tomb and after a long period with uh, discussions with the munici municipality of Jerusalem, uh, a trust was established here in Australia and the trust has three trustees and the trust has one sole purpose and that is to build a botanic garden on this site in Jerusalem. Now, as I mentioned, the history of this land is very intriguing, uh, having been both Islamic waqf land, uh, then it was uh, uh, publicly gazetted to be uh, a, a garden for the people of Israel, and then the land was, uh, management of the land was handed over by the municipality of Jerusalem to the trust. So, <clears throat> after a decade of, more or less a decade of negotiations, um, the agreement was signed uh, around about 2011. So when we received advice from our lawyers, HFN, that the agreement was signed, there was a lot of celebration by the three trustees and some friends, as you could well imagine. And at this stage, we were to appoint Professor Eric Meyer from Duke University in the United States to oversee the archaeological survey of the land. To, and then once that was completed, we could then plan the development of the garden. So it must be said that uh, the trustees are very, very grateful to the municipality of Jerusalem. Um, their generosity must be acknowledged um, because as you know, uh, land there has been, is contentious and uh, they were very um, understanding. And so uh, the garden was all set to progress or work was set to start mid 2011. So, but it didn't turn out the way we expected. And this is what happened a couple of weeks after the contract was signed. The entire rock ledge was bulldozed with very heavy earth moving equipment. The damage, that's just part of the damage to the rock ledge. They would have needed some serious equipment to do what they did. They took out the entire ledge. So I did not feel particularly good that day when I saw that photograph because I felt I had failed. I had failed in protecting the tomb. And it was what I considered, we were about to announce the greatest archeological discovery in 2000 years. The bulldozing of that tomb ranks with the destruction of the Buddhas, I think, um, in Afghanistan, I think it was, I forget where they were, by the Taliban. Now, it took me a long time to process this situation, but then I started to resurface, or surface. So this is a survey of the land that we had done during the process. And the green is the area of the land, which is quite significant. And it's about, as I said, near the um, American Colony Hotel, and it's about 800 metres north of the Damascus Gate. And it's in one of the most contentious areas in all of Jerusalem, as it would have to be. But, The reason why I certified these documents, which I discussed in the first session, a decade before that destruction, was that I decided to write my report on the home in Nazareth and my report on the tomb and seal it 
was that if one of the sites proved correct, by association, I could say the second site would have to be correct. Well, pretty much. So I used the principle of association as the best way to give a proof of two sites. So if one proved legitimate, there's a good chance the other would as well. And I, the reason why I made 300 of these is for events like this, because I thought, well, I'll just make a summary of the two discoveries, and I can simply uh, take this legal document, run a, a knife down it, you know, open it up, and read what I wrote at the beginning of the two discoveries. So, in a way, the destruction of the tomb in a strange way, is sealed in these envelopes. And I won't read it, but I might actually post it on my website. And it gives a lot of information about the home and the tomb. And there's a conclusion. Now, The point here, the really, the, the essence of the destruction of the tomb is this. No material place, no material place can give you spiritual growth. At best, it's a historical site. It may have uh, some, I don't know, uh, it may be just an emotional connection at best, but it doesn't actually um, provide any spiritual growth. The material cannot, um, uh, let me rephrase it. Earlier on in, in, in part two, I said the spiritual overrides or controls or is above the material. The material cannot work backwards. The material world cannot impact the spiritual life. So, if the tomb disappears, what does it mean? Well, it disappeared. It actually, um, perhaps, is good. How about that? I'm saying the destruction of the tomb is good. Because it means that... All people can visit the site and just reflect. There's no building, there's no religious organisation built around it, there's nowhere where people can drop down and, and pray or, you know, they just have to be in their spirit. And I thought, hmm, it sounds a bit like building a garden like the Garden of Eden, doesn't it? So... That's what I decided the garden should be like, a garden of Eden, a garden of botanic splendour. So, once the tomb was destroyed, it actually enabled me to rejig my approach. And with that in mind, I thought, well, let's proceed and start asking people to support the garden project. Well, this actually happened before the destruction of the tomb. This letter is from Dame Elizabeth Murdoch, one of the great philanthropists in, uh, of uh, Australia. And we had a meeting down at her farm, Cruden Farm, uh, as you can see in 2006. And she was a great supporter of this project. She saw great potential. And, she, and in the second letter, you'll see that she was also actively seeking uh, support from the director of the Botanic Gardens. 
Now, I'm not one for putting up uh, personal correspondence, um, but since Dame Elizabeth has passed on, this is more of an historical document, but I just wanted to give you uh, an idea of uh, the support that was coming in for this project, and I hope that in time, other people are inspired, like Dame Elizabeth Murdoch, to uh, support this botanic garden as well. She was a fantastic gardener. Her garden in Cruden Farm is really something to go you know, have a look at. Um, in fact, how I met Dame Elizabeth Murdoch, I was in fact a gardener. I was an, a gardener at a national trust house called uh, Como, Como House here in South Yarra. And um, she was on the garden committee and I was one of the gardeners and, and often there'd be a sort of small meeting about you know, what had to be done around the garden. So that's, what, uh, that's where the connection was. Um, so we are inviting all people from around the world to contribute to this building, to this construction of, of this botanic garden. We're also inviting uh, uh, botanic collections from around the world to offer plants for the garden. We will make arrangements for those plants to be uh, sent to Israel, uh, quarantined, checked, and then they will be placed in the garden and they will be, everything will be noted and we'll be able to tell where the plants came from, who donated them, and obviously, you know, obviously we need funds. We'll be building um, uh, you know, large uh, irrigation systems and then there has to be facilities for the people. So we're going to make this a really special garden. So our goal is to raise $2 million and I'm giving myself 24 months and this uh, presentation is the first public presentation of our fundraising campaign. So that pretty much wraps up um, the presentation about the discovery of the tomb and the home, about the meaning for the individual and this project in Jerusalem, which is, in my mind, both material and spiritual. It's a material expression of spiritual values. And I do hope some inspiration and comes your way and you might like to help us build this garden. It'll be certainly something to behold when it's finished, whenever that will be. And so I would like to take this time to thank you for your attention today. Hope you've enjoyed it. And um, we may see you again somewhere around. And so uh, we shall keep you posted. You can visit my website and visit the website of the Friendship Garden of Jerusalem and watch its progress online. So um, I hope you got something from today, some inspiration, some aha moments, and um, I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.